speaking of punk roots. We discuss the fourth album by mercurial post punk band The Fall, Hex Induction Hour, with one of the band's 66 or thereabouts former members, drummer turned author Paul Hanley. If ever there was a band defined by change, it was The Fall. Theirs is a story of constant rephrasing, of songs, of lyrics, of members, of facts, with the last word always going to charismatic founder and frontman Marky e. Smith. Smith's death in 2018 means that for better or for worse, their catalogue is now finally fixed. In 1982, the post-punk group released their fourth album, Hex Induction Hour. At the time, they were struggling for attention outside their small but devoted following that included Radio 1 DJ John Peel. Hex Induction Hour changed all that. It was critically lauded and five decades on is still regarded by many as their masterpiece. One of the two drummers that played on the album, Paul Hanley, has written a new book, Have a Bleeding Guess, about how it was made. And he joins me now with music critic Kate Mossman to discuss its continuing significance. Hi, Kate. Paul? Hello. Hi. Hi. Paul, you were only 16 when you started playing drums for The Fall, which is extraordinary, really. What was your impression of the band at the time? Well, I was a massive fan of The Fall before I joined, and then uh, even before um, I knew anybody in the band, really, and then Mark Riley joined, who I've known all my life, and then my brother joined. So by the time it came out to getting me in, really, yeah, half of the people <laughs> I've known all my life. So it wasn't quite as daunting as it might be. Having said that, you know, it was never going to be particularly uh, simple joining a band with Mark E. Smith, but it, I was more than delighted to do it because I, I loved them. Staying with you for a moment then, Paul, the band went to Iceland to record some tracks for the album, didn't they? How important was that trip? I think it was, I think it was massive in, in terms of the, um, the way the album turned out. Um, it was weird because they'd been to America with, with Carl, the other drummer, and then the first thing we did really was go to Iceland. So I was still back, sort of back on probation. And it was quite daunting, but we went into this studio in um, which was legend says he's built out of a lava cave but it was a really really nice studio far nicer than any studio we were we were i think we were ever in before or after so and we we wrote that song that you just played a bit of there iceland mm. and it's completely different from everything the fall ever did so that kind of that kind of set the tone for the album really so it was very important and kate what was your reaction when you first heard the album do you remember yeah, well, it's interesting that Paul talks about the, the, the dauntingness of the band as, as a member of the band. I think for the public listening to them, they're, they're seen as a very inaccessible, um, incomprehensible group. And mm. I first heard it when I was a student. I thought, oh, no, I'm going to have to like The Fall now. I don't know what to make of it. And actually, <laughs> I, I find them extremely accessible. And I don't know whether it's because they don't have that kind of – I was expecting like a post-punk screen of cool that kind of kept them at a distance. And it's not. It's vital – rancorous exciting cacophonous music and it just i just think it stands the test of time incredibly well and it's bizarrely good for the mind in lockdown i think it's like it's the music of the walls closing in on you and these these amazing slices of poetry kind of coming through the primordial swamp of the music i mean i'd have to agree because i've been listening to it in my kitchen over the last couple of days and that's exactly the way that i've been feeling about it i wonder whether or not that's like slightly intimidating nature that you're talking about is to do with the type of fandom as well that's inspired by the fall like it's pretty yeah avid, I mean, it's isn't it the bibles out there on the internet about what all the songs mean and stuff and i think you know there's a what's interesting to me is that that mark said it was a sort of reaction against a melodic pop like elvis costello and spandau ballet that he saw as gloomy music yeah and i like the fact that the idea of melodic pop might be gloomy because i think this is sort of anything but gloomy in a funny way and it's very uh very wild. To what extent do you feel like then this is a piece of work that almost more celebrates the passion to make music, the desire to express yourself in music more than musicianship itself? Yeah, well, he was well known for saying he wasn't a musician. He was he was a layman. And there's always something, I think, sort of brilliantly disingenuous about musicians who say that, because at the end of the day, I mean, this is for, where do you get two drummers apart from, you know, jazz rock bands? Uh, there, there's wonderful bass ostinatos. There are amazing use of dynamics. There's, there's poetry. I think he was a really good musician. I think he was like Captain Beefheart. 
in that he knew what he was doing. I mean, Paul mentioned the tracks uh, recorded in the lava cave. And Mark said, that's why you get that snap on those songs. I mean, that's the ears of a musician, mm. of a producer. It's, it's kind of a pose to pretend that you don't know what you're doing, I think. Paul, famously, Mark said, and how many times we've heard this quote, I couldn't imagine, but if it's me and your granny on bongos, then it's a fall gig. And he was the only one constant member of the band. But from your book, there's a certain amount of setting the record straight by, you know, emphasising that Hex Induction Hour came not simply from his vision of it, but also from the rest of the band interpreting that vision. Did you yeah, feel like that, that was an important thing to, to write about? Yes, definitely, because one thing you could say about The Fall is it would never have worked with Mark E. Smith and some session musicians. I mean, he, as much as he might uh, try and disparage what the people in his band did, he, he'd have been lost without them. And I mean, that's the, mm. true for any lineup of The Fall. But I think I think Hex Induction Hour, as, mu as much as any other album, kind of set the tone for what The Fall was, I think. Because it, it was when he'd finally established this sort of fragile group of semi non musicians who could make the noise that he got in his head you know but he couldn't with that noise he couldn't make it himself yeah if you the thing about the fall is if you if you if it was just the noise that Marky e. Smith was going to make, it's completely unlistenable. <laughs> so if you get that balance right between what he thinks he wants and what he probably does want, then that's when the falls at its best, I think. Yeah. And Kate, the, the band were always resistant to being part of any scene and seemed kind of outside of time, really. Do you think the music has a particular resonance now? Yeah, I think it's. I, I don't think it's dated at all because it didn't sound like anything anything else in the first place. And I just, I just really think that if you're if you're trapped in your house at the moment, when's the next chance mm. you're going to get really listen to a record, you know, intensely? And I was, I was thinking about this thing at the end of the news every night. They show these kind of marching bands recording in their bedrooms on Zoom, you know, doing yeah, something. Yeah, and there is that DIY ethic, isn't there? Which I, I guess that is that is part of. Um, yeah. Just quickly well, moving well, to you, Paul. Just finally, we've heard that Florian Schneider a co-founder of Kraftwerk has died today. They were a huge yeah. influence on so many musicians. Were you a fan? I was, yeah. I mean, they were they were a massive influence on Manchester music as a whole, I think. I mean, you can obviously hear that in New Order, but then, then that whole sort of motoric kind of sound, that's all the Manchester drummers kind of yeah. latched on to that. Yeah. And that started with Kraftwerk. You, you know, that kind of that type of beat you can hear in Autobahn, that sound of the motorway. That was massive with all, like, with New Order, Joy Division and yeah, Buscox as well. absolutely. Thank you so much, Paul Hanley and Kate Mossman. And Have a Bleeding Guess is out now. <laughs> 